so we get comments sometimes, haven't we? Like, oh, flashy yeah. video and stuff in that. We're like, oh, wow, that video you just commented and cost like four hundred pounds or three hundred pounds. Not even that, do you know what I mean? And that was because it's not people assume things about bands, but they don't actually know that what bands have to put in before mm. they even make a penny. So um, I feel that. Yeah. Do you think there's a do you think that's a stereotype that the bigger your your name as an as an act gets, the more expectations people have? <laughs> KillerKellerOfficial.com THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture. THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. We need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central, lot of the central as you could be, should be, or even want to be, especially this time of, uh, of our lives. Um, big shout out to Graffiti Kings inside the place. Of course, we're doing this internationally via Zoom, and why not? The technology is here, the appliance of science. I go by the name of Killer Keller, and on the other end, we have two fine dimes, man. Georgia, Amy from the Nova Twins. What are we saying, girls? We yeah. have. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite an intro. <laughs> hey, muck about. Hey, I don't mince my worms. Huh? <laughs> Where are you guys? Where are you? We're actually in Hastings at the moment, but we're from London and Essex. I know Hastings. I know Hastings reasonably well. My granddad was from Hastings, so I've got a. Oh, really? Yeah, I've got a rough nice. geographical there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being a being a Sussex boy. Yeah. Well. So I we're see. both here now, but we're we're you know London Essex girls at heart. Ah, uh, gotcha. This is all coming together now. I see. So you're in the same area, but you're not in the same houses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yet. Yeah, and this is okay. So this is this is where we just get started, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who don't know about the Nova Twins, all right, this is a duo that is, is comprising of bass, guitarists, drums, uh, but dynamically duo. The two girls have been coming hard and heavy for a, for a long time, man. I think I got whispers of like your names. <gasps> well, I'm, you know, I'm pushing like two, three years ago, maybe more, maybe more when I was doing some circuits with my Dem band, and then. And then Bob Villain mentioned you, uh, Mummy mentioned you, Slobheads have mentioned you. Like, but you guys seem to be like of ahead of a certain time. You like before the new kind of punk rush. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we've been a band for quite a long, actually. We've, you know, we've been a band for like six years um, more. So we've always just been doing our thing, playing like punk gigs, punk shows, and then eventually it just kind of. We just grew on the live circuit, basically, on the punk scene. And we just kind of came up and then started playing in Europe and then other countries as well, um, went to America. And, and then, yeah, so we've just been doing our thing, really. And just, it's nice to see Rock is starting to make a, a new surgence again. So mm. I feel like it's a good time for live music, for heavy music again. But um, they're just the same as always. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, I hear you. It's, it's a funny one, isn't it? Because for... To fans, like I'm a fan of that genre. To, to me, it's like it's just another day. But you know how these things have their ebbs and flows of like being in the public eye and then drawing back again. You know, and it's it's one of those. Hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> what's your take? What's your take on on it all as a as a whole? Because if I mean prior to lockdown, of course. But like you were saying, you were you were traveling a lot. You were doing a lot of touring, and we're not—we're not, we're not just talking about the last few. I mean, you're talking everything from like Skunk and Nancy to, you know, you were—you, you know, you were doing a lot of shows with loads of different acts and getting about. What's what was the general vibe? What was the reaction to what you guys were doing? I think um, we were—you know—we've been so lucky to have these amazing bands take us on. Like we went on tour with Prophets of Rage a few times, Crazy. and then Skunk and Nancy. So, you know, we was we were just so happy to be in their presence and like get advice from them and really them just showing us kind of the new gen, the way, cause that, you know, they're like the top of their games. It was just nice to kind of feel like, you know, they kind of believed in that way too. And, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was awesome. We had a lot of fun touring. Yeah. Profits of rage are just insane. You know, mm-hmm. 
that whole mm. thing comes that that that's like a zeitgeist in itself, isn't it? It just rarely happens, and then this thing is just like and couldn't be more apt for landing at the the right time of uh, um, political consciousness. On my phone, I actually got a notification saying three years today was when we did our first show with them, which is just crazy. Good <laughs> time. Right. I know <laughs> that 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 kind of reminder every. T- two three years just spins me out it's like sometimes you'll catch yourself saying something that you have absolutely no idea what you were talking about three years ago and you're just like oh shit what was i talking about yeah. <laughs> especially when you go back 10 years or something yeah oh my god or it feels like yesterday and you're just like did that really happen that long ago it's so weird it, do, it it does my head in, and then, and this is the thing, especially with like as as a, a live act or an, or a performing artist or band, or even things like this, you're constantly th- having stuff thrown at you all the time. Like it does just merge into one big clusterfuck of mm. it's all just happening. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone's just, yeah, everyone's just always on the move. They're just trying to get to the next play so you don't really have time to process sometimes so that's what's been nice about lockdown you actually can just stop and just really think about everything yeah yeah you really do everything. and writing becomes a, a little less uh, uh uh of an urgency which one of you guys do you both write yeah you write songs together mm. yeah you've definitely got a window of time where you can just create the gems and not feel like prohibited by I've got to be somewhere yeah <laughs> yeah but time creeps up it's like I felt like that for the beginning where we were just writing because we thought well why not we've got this time there's nothing else to do we're in lockdown let's write mm. and then like oh actually we're gonna, let's start writing a bit more because we want to obviously release new music at some point so mm. so it's a kind of energy but it's um to how it was from the beginning of the year but it's good because we're not actually distracted much. <laughs> mm, yeah. Or like exhausted because like I feel for bands who had to record their second album like between tours Last. and stuff because it's like you're so knackered coming back anyway. It's just like how do you get the strength to then go and like write, record? Just, <laughs> yeah. And you know what? There's a lot of mechanics behind having like anything more than a three piece band. You you really are dealing with personalities, temperaments, measures like some people got kids, some people haven't. Is anybody, you know, it's, it's just it's just so hard to get, especially like in a situation nowadays, it's so hard to just pin everyone down and say, hey, look, let's make a blocking record. You know, <laughs> we always say this. We're really lucky. There's just two of us. We're all like, how do people do it like in a four piece or a five piece? Because you ha- not everyone's going to agree. So with no. us, we're really lucky because generally we're like, yes. And if we disagree, it's like, well, let's meet in the middle and then it's fine. But how can you meet in the middle of five people? You can't. It's <laughs> impossible. And I, I often think that particularly now with, with technology being the way it is and like how people consume music, I mean, we were talking about songwriting just for a second there, but how much time, how much involvement can you have in constructing something that has now slowly become, without sounding, with, with, without it meaning in any way crass, junk food. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's so passively, it's people's soundtracks and stuff. And how much, how much, how much, I mean, quality will go down, but how much time can you spend on it? And how many arguments can you have with like three or four people at any given time, you know, about how, how it should sound? Sometimes songs take a long time because I feel like with us, we'll be writing something and then it might not sit right, but then we'll both know when we've found like the right formula for it. But we do definitely kind of spend time on it in general tweak it until we feel 100% happy because mm. if we're not we're a bit like mm, mm. we just go off it so yeah you can hear that in the t- integrity though I think that the difference between fast and slow it, it really is quality and integrity isn't it mm. but some great songs could be written in an hour it just depends yeah. <laughs> some people get lucky and it just comes quick <laughs> yeah, it's true it's true I, f- I, I do feel for the three to four to five band members I do, I really do feel for that moment. You know, the back line alone for something like that, you know, there used to be record labels for that shit, but now even that's, even that's, I mean, in, in the strength to you guys, I'm talking, you know, that 
you are able to like operate in such a micro way and the, the, the size of the songs and the grandioso in which you guys drop in and, you know, and explode with these songs is, you know, it's, it's credit yeah. to you, honestly. But you'd think that, but live for us, I guess it's, obviously we have like, George has two amps, I have one and we have our boards. But then because we don't have a drummer in our band and we have to, actively hire a drummer find a drummer who's available we do have main drummers but it depends who's free for them shows and then it's like stress because you're like <laughs> who's free let's rehearse you up and then so it's, it's you, you has its pros and cons you know sometimes you know some bands i guess to them the bands who are the drummer the guitarist the bass player they just show up if they're you know mm. fit enough to show up and then for us we have to you know we have to get our drummers in so it's not Every band has their pros and cons. Mm, yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I, I, it's 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 if it's not one side of the uh, the event, it's the other side, isn't it? It's it, the writing and the creating and the releasing is pretty straightforward. It's like yeah. two democratic decisions. But when it comes to when it comes to the live, yeah, I can imagine that's pretty tough. Like having to call in, like you know, one of the three you may have on your phone that you've relied on for the last. <laughs> six shows and then all of a sudden it's like oh man they have run it lizzie we're really close to the wire now we need to get this confirmed are we still gonna have to rehearse it yet yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that going on. yeah. <laughs> a lot of that stuff well i mean you know with every cloud at the moment like you say it's a it's a case of creating and making music happen isn't it? you know how many how many songs are you envisaging in the next uh, well at least this year to to uh, put pen to paper to i mean you you really do have like an inde- indefinite amount of time with with the way the world is at the moment i think we're just writing like we want to release an album soon but you just never know when we were going to release it like you said it is up to us we have time we don't know the state of the live industry at the moment and it sucks not being able to tour an album mm. that's what you work up to so yeah. i just think the options are open and i think we're just enjoying writing at the moment you know mm. it's fun it's actually fun this time around <laughs> yeah i bet i bet i bet some people though i, I you know i spoke to a couple of people on po- podcast and some of some of some of the whispers were of the like that there's this heightened expectation of delivering something because everybody else is writing in this time. You know, some people, gen- yeah. I mean, a couple of people I've spoken to have genuinely found it hard to kind of get to grasp the idea of A, doing something in a room on their own and B, having to, ha- having to come up with something inspired within four walls. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is tricky, especially when you are in like a four or five piece band, people might meet up, and hang out and write really just freely, have a few drinks and write. So yeah. people who are just, they're sociable and they love just, that's how they create because they just mm. in that environment. So it is tricky for everyone, you know. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So what's the inspirations? What were your inspirations to begin with? And still still is for that matter. What inspires you to? I think there's lots of different things. I think it's uh, personal experiences. It's, how we're feeling. This year was the weirdest year for a lot of people, for all of us, you know, in many different ways. And just because we were isolated doesn't mean things weren't still happening. It was, it was very real for a lot of people. And I think we, we've just been, we've had you know, political movements, of Black Lives Matter, that's happened. We've had, you know, our own personal shit. So it's just all gone into the music. And I think we've just tried to take any kind of negativity and turn it into something positive with the writing and just keep on it and on our craft on our instruments and just you know enjoy it without any pressure of thinking oh who's going to listen to it or uh, it's just us trying to enjoy ourselves and yeah. have therapy for our music <laughs> yeah for sure for sure musically what's out there at the moment that you're like buzzing to what's the what's the what's the latest that you're like yeah i fuck with them at the moment they're sick obviously like the bring me record <laughs> so sick like when Ollie sent it, we were just literally freaking out. It was so, every song's just like a banger. And obviously That's sick, yeah. Wicked. So happy to be on it, but the whole EP is just insane. I'm not, not sure if you're a fan of um, Does It Offend You? Yeah. And and The Prodigy and, you know, I'm sure that I'm, I'm going oh, down. Prodigy. Oh, we yeah. love The Prodigy, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 th- I feel like 
I feel like there's a there's a definite bridge there with the uh, with the electronic side to what you guys are bringing to the punk aesthetic. You know what I mean? Yeah, like we're so inspired by that kind of like ravey kind of music too. Where it just feels like that punch because. Uh, I think our, the wideness of our sound was inspired by us playing those at festivals because we love the feeling of it sounded enormous and the way the crowd reacts. We always thought about that when we write, how we want to feel on stage and how we want people to connect with it in that kind of like mm. a party way as well because yeah. it's just fun. <laughs> yeah. Do you see? Do you see a lot of you know you know just taking those that that influence uh, it, as as quite a um that when you say prodigy that I mean. We we are talking extremely broad, but because their influences carry in all different de- decades of their of their work, right? Mm. Um, and people are influenced by them so much. I'm going with this. Do you, do you feel that there's a presence in your stuff that you can see other people being inspired in the same way for the time that you've been doing music? Can you can you, <laughs> can you guys seriously? Can you guys tell? Because I know you know it's it's been a minute, but there's definitely. You were definitely ahead of the curve. Do you see other acts and you're like, yeah, they kind of got, there's a little bit of no there. <laughs> you know. No, I don't know. Not for us to say. People, Not for us you know? to say. <laughs> people might think so. I don't know. <laughs> Being modest here. Being modest. But I tell you, man, like I can hear it, you know, when I hear, when I heard, you know, so your early stuff, especially, you know, there's, you know, and I don't know, man. There's an authenticity there. Just saying, I just feel like there's an authenticity to what you guys are doing. And I remember just hearing your name back in the day, you know. Um, is it considered, I don't know, is it considered like a, a compliment when, when things, other people's music sounds slightly indirectly sounding like you? I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, I feel like... <laughs> this is a funny question. Sorry. I know. <laughs> Yeah, it has to be a compliment, I guess, if they, like, you know, respect us as well. But if it's just, like, I don't know. But I guess it's a compliment. It's, it's a compliment. Everyone, it's, it's nice if people take inspiration from you, but it's not cool. I hate it when bands take inspiration from other bands, but don't actually give them the credit. Credit, you know yeah. I mean? If we're like, yeah, we love this band and this is what inspired us, be honest about it. Yeah, they don't just like the whole rip-off it. thing. The rip off thing, I can't stand. No, <laughs> that's not cool. We're, no. not, we're not talking necessarily just about us, but sometimes we can hear something. We'll be like, oh, that sounds a little bit, you know, like they're obviously being, yeah. it's different if they're like, this is my favourite band. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, you know, that's, that's why. Fun. But when they don't, it's like, mm, it's, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? And you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's so in- obvious, isn't it? That you're yeah. just like, yeah, just shout it. Just call it. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like any, any art. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, and genre, genre wise, as we were saying, it's 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 comes in, it comes in ebbs and flows how the media receive it. I was watching MTV Music Awards. And I saw Young Blood and a couple of other people doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a young blood fan in a way. Like, no, he's cool. He's cool, but mm-hmm. my only reservation, and I don't know if it's because I'm an old head, but he kind of, he kind of flits in different genres a little bit too uh, ad hoc. Sometimes I feel like. It's great to just have a John gen- to be into a genre and just max it out, you know, in a in a kind of motorhead way. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, I mean, just go everyone- hard, Ramones, go hard, do you the to the biggest? And I don't know, what's your thoughts on that? But I feel like you know it's the new gen, and we've grown up listening to so much different things, so it mm. just wouldn't make sense for someone to be so diehard in one genre. Genre, because even look at Bring Me the Horizon, like. Yeah, they started off in one genre, but they expanded and they do, you know, so many, many different things. I think that's what everyone needs and expects for new music to come out. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it'll just sound like the Ramones or sound like people before. Yeah, and you, you don't want that neither. Because no. then it becomes basic plagiarism. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I think it's each to their own. I, I just think, I think we can bend the rules. I think what's happened is with kind of been brought up in this industry where 
they've put boxes and boundaries around so many artists, meaning that you don't get to even discover some really cool, amazing art because it's not allowed because it doesn't fit in their boxes. They're mm. kind of in between the lines. So I think it's important to let people kind of experiment and grow and evolve and give them space to because we all do that in every aspect of our day-to-day -day lives. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, again, touching on what you said the question before when you was like what do you think of bands kind of copying other bands but it's another thing when you've got the underground who are experimental and this is where a lot of the mainstream go and find their inspiration yes. from and i think that's where a big problem is because you'll start to see like the underground surge it will reflect on the mainstream so you'll see it on the emas you'll see it on all them kind of shows but no one's actually trying to look out for the people who are actually the, doing it actually like, doing it the real kind of deal and like all just independent venues that are like bringing up the new acts there's not enough like heart and love that goes into the underground i think it's so important and that's where everybody gets their inspiration from so i think that's where the credit is due um mm. so yeah i just think you know i'm really yeah. glad you i'm really glad you flagged that because sometimes i think to myself that that incubation period especially for developing acts like you know, it's, it's, it always starts a little bit garagey and lofty and a little bit, well, yeah. you need that. And then for someone to come and just like basically uh, take those coordinates and plug it into another act mm. that they feel is more well refined, it's, 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 it's essentially taking from the underground. Yeah. The, you know what I mean? The, 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 um, the testing area. They take from the testing area. Yeah. They disregard like the hours and hard work that that person spent getting that whole vibe, aesthetic sound and everything. And they just literally just pick from it and just put it to someone that's yeah. not fit like that. And they just have it for one thing. And then, you know, then they're done with it where it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very real lifestyle for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's, it's, it's in the arts in general. You see it in painters, you see it in fashion, you see it in, you see, you know, these underground kind of people come out and you're like, that's really, really cool. And suddenly you see a really big corporation using their prints or mm. using their sound. And it's like, well, like I said, if you're giving the credit, all good, because then yeah. you're actually giving back, you're helping that aspiring artist. But when you just take, when you've got so much already, it's mm. a problem. Mm. So I, I think it needs to be called out. And I just think artists, that's why we've been really lucky with people like... Um, George was saying like, um, like Tom Morello and Skunk and Nancy and Ollie and that because they're, these are people who we're really small in comparison to all these massive bands and they're people who are just being like cool you know like we're happy to band together because we believe that working with new acts is going to help the revival of mm -hmm. heavy music live music mm -hmm. and there's so mm -hmm. many great acts we can name you so many and it's just like well why no one paying attention to these bands they're great mm -hmm. so um, yeah I think we're just trying to you know keep it there. moving i'm with keep you i'm with you i think for everyone though do you know what i mean because there's so many great people out there <laughs> yeah but but um you're right in there is, and i think this comes from a more mature approach with punk and rock and alternative um the alternative industry now because there was a heyday in, at 90s with blink 182 the lincoln parks so, and even before mm -hmm. that and I think there's some errors that have been learned where me coming from a, a hip hop world, well, you know, a more street culture world, mm. there's a lot of junk food that kind of does just get, um, but get plagiarized. And people think that because something is for free, they can just have it and it's theirs and they own and they, they run with it. Yeah. I'm going to wear the Supreme top because he wore the Supreme top. Who, who was the original Supreme wearer? Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just like, you know, it's a thankless offering. When when the alternative genres, they like you say, they cultivate. It feels like it feels like more so they cultivate. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um I mean just going back to some of the original like hybrids and where this the genre has gone. And this generation now, a lot of them were growing up on the Lincoln Parks, weren't they? They were going yeah. to kind of blend of like rap and rock, just 
I mean, it was so it was captured so well at that at that time, wasn't it? Yeah, it's it's, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Really, it's it's a lot of it's quite there's a lot of um, things to unravel in within that whole rap and rock genre as well, mm. you know, because it, again, it's yeah, you don't hear, it can get even political sometimes because when people do infuse that genre. And again, then you're suddenly t- you're looking at the hip hop scene, but you don't want to include them in the rock scene. That's another problem, you know. Mm. So it's 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 all like everything's on turning table, like balance tables at the moment. You know, everyone's kind of thinking, thinking moving forward, we can do better because yeah. we've learned so much, especially this year. So I'm looking forward to seeing the outcome of mm. how people work together and kind of unify and include more people just because it's good not because it looks like it's supposed to belong in this genre or that genre just because it, we're open-minded <laughs> yeah for real no no for real yeah there is a there is a um a, a heavy a value in both the sensibilities in in rock and the sensibilities in rap it's like you better come correct if you're doing both of them like that you know what i mean but yeah. with te- technology being the way it is, th- that's almost become the dictator of, like you say, this this kind of widespread genre crossing and emerging of different styles and sounds. You know, whether it's the new sample packs or the latest guitars or the latest social platform, that dictates everything. Doing, doesn't it? We started doing this because we didn't look up to anyone like we we don't look up to anyone who looked like us growing up. So. You know, whoever we inspire from this, who's like a young girl wanting to pick up an instrument, that's amazing, you know. Mm-hmm. What are you even playing for? What, as a band? No, or... individually. Like, how long How long you guys been playing instruments and, you know, was it a school thing? Was it like, were you, you always wanted to be in a band? No, I always wanted to be, yeah, a musician in a band. Because I started playing bass when I was like 12, so probably like 10 years now. Um, so yeah, a long time. Wow, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Amy? I always originally started off as just vocals. Um, and then Georgia's dad was kind of like, look, you need to be able to communicate your musical ideas. And you're not, you know, because I was always having... To, before I met George, well, I was I did know Georgia. We was in the same household, but we weren't actually in a band at the time. And he, I was always looking for like guitarists or someone to help me out. Mm. And he, you know, and then it was he was just like, just learn yourself, you know. So yeah. that came a bit later. Um, and I just remember I've obviously been playing. I don't know, probably for like I don't know since I started the band. That's how long I've been playing. Properly. When I, by the time I practiced enough, I was ready to be able to play with Georgia. Not as good at the time. But no, I, no, I feel like, that. Okay, I'm really, let's do this band. I've, I've got this under my belt now, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. But I, um, I would but, say that's yeah. pretty cool because you literally play the instrument to, to match the music you're doing. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. And then you learn along the way and then it's fine. But um, and I think it, learning that way is like, because you don't, you just put whatever musical creativity you want the guitar to sound like. And I think that was like a kind of important way for us to form the Nova sound. Cause I didn't like grow up listening to bass players playing like bunk bass or mm. slap bass or anything. I just literally just thought, okay, I want to play bass cause it sounds cool and like heavy, like synth bass songs. So I just thought, okay, let me like find my own way of playing it to create that instead of like, going down like a YouTube wormhole. Oh, yeah. In like bass covers. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Um, Just going back to what we were saying before with regards to, you know, not taking too much influence from the, you know, from the the history books and just going straight in with something that you could probably merge all different genres in, right? Yeah. You can go anywhere. It's still important to know the history as well, like, my dad made sure he did show us tons of YouTube clips of, you know, incredible bass players and guitarists and artists. So you still have, you know, history and context. It's so important to to know. So in regards to your pops, so 
was he in a band was 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 he in a band or or a group or was he just like a big kind of music enthusiast he's a he's a musician yeah so his whole career he's done music you know awesome. so he, he taught um us both how to play and then we just kind of went off and made crazy nova sounds with that information that's great like a mentor you're the mentor <laughs> your mum and dad are really um, yeah. they're both musical so they both were just literally like well you know they're the ones who told us not to look too much to other people and figure out what you want to do and what you like kind of thing so if it was a bit weird and a bit wacky it was encouraged even mm -hmm. if it didn't quite make sense at the early days it was like yeah keep going with that even if it sounded like nuts it was just <laughs> like yeah great you're on the right track so yeah, yeah keep going no yeah reason. Yeah, we didn't know any different. We were just like, cool, that must mean, you know, because we trust them completely. And we just thought, cool, that must mean it sounds good, right? <laughs> well, yeah, um, because you're just getting the okay sign every time you yeah. just... <laughs> nuts. But from that creativity and the, the chaos around it in the best way possible, and then we grew and then kind of honed in our sound that way. And then was like, this is actually what we're trying to do somewhere in the middle here around all this that we're creating, which was, it's, again, it's fun. And that's why we always say it's important for new bands to be able to have the time to develop and choose what they want to do before they get involved with like a and r -ing so early because yeah. it can steer you down a path you never ever saw yourself going down. And sometimes can result in, um, you being unhappy and then when you kind of suppress creatives, I feel like it can also cause like depression and things like that. So I always feel like creatives need to do what they want to do. Let them yeah. be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Because if you've got too many like imposters coming into the room early to early. kind of, it goes wrong. It goes wrong. Yeah. Especially you if you're really young. Yeah, yeah you imagine. can find yourself because then you can filter out what's even good advice or bad advice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, because you're not able to filter that through. Yeah, I, I always find like when I when I first hear a band, that the thing that you gravitate to the, the quickest is the the energy. Like, you can have like the shittest production ever. It doesn't matter because if the energy's like on point, like you're just grabbed by the this, you know, the intensity of that. That's what you yeah. get out of like, I feel like that's what you get the best out of new bands. They're just like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's do it. It's true. When you hear, sometimes you can hear like a gem and like um, we did um, this, our Voices for the Unheard show where we try and shine light on like up and coming new, like heavy music. And so we got sent like over 200 people sent us their demos. And Damn. some were like so rough, but amazing you can yeah. just hear their that that energy you're talking about we were like that's what it's about that's they're the people sometimes over the more produced people sometimes like, that's amazing you know and you know that they're going to grow into whatever they need to be but um yeah you can definitely hear it. a good song and a good energy it doesn't matter how much the production's worth you hear it regardless that's mm -hmm. sick so what was this what was this event then what was it a competition we basically we hosted a radio show on Represent Radio and we did like a Voices for the Unheard takeover where we chose a spotlight artist. So we Wicked. got everyone to send in their songs um, so we could spin them on the radio. And yeah, wow. we covered so many like cool like new bands, which was sick. That's sick. And I'm Represent as well. That's so sick. It was so fun. <laughs> We listened to everyone. It took ages because obviously you go through every time, like, over 200 songs. We were like, wow. yeah, it was up at like 2 a.m. in bed. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was pumping. We got pumped at like 2. We was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we found the at like 2 a.m. We were just like on the bed, like, yeah. Yeah, especially when you find a good one. We're like, yeah, that's the, that's the shit. <laughs> any, any names that, I mean, this is the pressure one. This is the pressure question. Any names that stick out out of the 200? We were just like, yo, these guys, though, like, they should be. They should be clear already. So um, well, the we picked was Toki Horror. He was really, really cool. They're like, um, it kind of sounds like electronic, but we kind of mix up electronic punk. It was just a fuse of, it's fun to sound like drum and bass at one point. Mm, they were really cool. There was another band, what are they called? Like, um, Arc. 
ark something that we shared them as well i've got the name written down it's yeah. like no, i remember he talking about um ark something let me see we're good to here we go we're going into the we're going into the files the files <laughs> go- files the files is getting deep right now I'm trying to look I need to find the Oh, where are you? <laughs> we will interrupt this with a show. We played, um, Zaria was really cool. We played her. Oh, we... K- KXHO5 is sick. Damn. See, um, these are names, people. If you ain't getting to know, then you better get, yeah, get your Instagrams at the ready and get these followings because, uh, you know, it's the upper Oh, it's so back. annoying. We literally, it might have been George's laptop or one of our laptops. We literally broke down everyone that kind of. Um, yeah, so I'm literally on my laptop now trying to be like, who are these bands? Because we need to, like, we'd love need to, to give them up. a little... Need to big them up. We need to big up the new new bands, man. Yeah. For sure. In the meantime, though, while you are, list- you are, you are looking around and searching... Um, oh. um, man- Pom Pom Squad, The Pom- Canvas, they were really, that really great. The that was The, the Canvas we really, really loved. Really, really great. Uh, really and there was, like... Here lies Lucy, Medway, Arx, um, um, Argo, Bria, oh. Miss Anzel, Beefy Wink, um, Jeez. Anola Gay. Then we, we wrote the ones that we loved. Um, Cherry and the Fever Dreams, Voice of a... Oh, um, Pipeline, Right Girl, Darko. There we go. <laughs> right. Like... This, is, this, this isn't just like... This is like... It sounds like a whole, gen- like whole new genre. Just like of nothing but new. Yeah, it's all new. And there's loads. Oh, there's and so cruel, the, That's just on our Crawlers, Curls, the Canvas Collective. Crazy. Yeah, there was Yeah. So we just had to I know it took us a while to get there, but we literally right. wrote the ones we were thinking, these are all like incredible. Like if we come up with a place or something, we need to add these. And I think that's what it's about, people just I don't know, just sharing the love. Yeah, you've got to share the love, got to get it out there. Share the you love. Know, you've got to share the love. And, you know, in in a world that's like, especially in the UK, which is predominantly grime-driven, you know, it's, it's like the, the narrative of the, of the decade, you know, the outlets for for a lot of these bands to come through, they, they can be quite limiting. And it's great to represent, and you guys have just literally just shone a light on some of the, these names alone. It's like, yo, this is, it makes me want, I'm going to go be checking them out. I'm going to the gym, I'm going to check them out, you know? Great. Yeah, exactly. We hope that's you know what people get from it. At least you know it's good. Yeah, it's good. So, <laughs> all by the sounds. I mean, we've already kind of talked about this before we went live. Um, you guys just hang out together all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to be there now, but I forgot. I forgot, and I wasn't even ready. So I was like, "Shit, I got ten minutes to kind of get dressed. I need to get to George's after this because we're just doing some it's stuff." Like- Around the corner from each other, which is very. Happy. It's actually like a one-minute drive. <laughs> I thought I or thought a this ten-minute was... walk. <laughs> when you said, "Yeah, all right," so so this is just a kind of like because we can, we're going to go separate on Zoom. This is it's like one of those <laughs> ones. <laughs> we're going to be up after this anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you're going to come back. Say, how was that for you? Was it good? Yeah, it was good. How did I look in the camera? Was it all right. <laughs> you know what I mean, do you guys have any arguments? Is there any like? I mean, you don't seem like the kind of you know, duo to be like arguing about, you know, the yellows or the blue M&Ms, you know what I mean? But seriously, if you guys are always together, what's the biggest arguments you've ever had? We've actually never argued. argued. No, not We can like disagree that. on something, but we never argue. We've never argued. Mm. Never. Touch Yeah, yeah, touch wood. Touch. What's, the, what's, the, what's the main dispute about things? What, whether the snare's too high or something? <laughs> It would be the red or yellow M and M's. It would be like I'm thinking more blue, and one would be like I'm thinking more green. I'd be like, mm, well, let's just choose red. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Literally. Come or if we're hungry, conference. sometimes we can go a bit weird, but that's all right. That's just normal. Hmm. <laughs> hang- hangry, you get hangry. We get hangry. Yeah. Hangry. So what's a day in life then? So if you guys are living 10 minutes down the road, so what's, what's the day in the life of the Nova Twins from when you wake up? What's the policy? How does it start to how does it end? Eat breakfast. <laughs> what do you have for breakfast? Right now, as you can see, I'm halfway. I know, I, I need to got some. <laughs> hey, don't you be getting a rock and roll on bit. me, Amy. <laughs> 
I've got a bit of wheat of Vicks. <laughs> <laughs> but on a special day, it'll be egg and beans. Um, <laughs> I've been uh, loving the egg and bagel mushroom. Oh, you're doing egg and bagel. Uh, or wrap. Oh, making me so doing the bagel. Eat, okay, eat. so so from there. And then we meet up. Mm-hmm. We meet up and then we take over George's living room with our pedal boards, guitars, and um, setups, laptops, literally just all that shit everywhere. And then we just write and we, we write and you know, chat. Right. Chat, eat, <laughs> eat, chat some more. Like write, chat, eat, repeat all day. It's just like chat, 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 right, right, eat, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's amazing. It, that's amazing. Not very rock and roll. But that's what we do. Actually, I beg to differ because you guys being bohe- as bohemian as that's that could possibly be at a time, you're literally living everyone's dream of like day-to-day creative uh cultivating that word again cultivating <laughs> jeremy not a lot of people well, can say they do that we are lucky yeah well, i think we just make it work you know like it's obviously difficult when you're and kind of new well we're not a new band but we're not a huge band so it doesn't mean we've got i think sometimes people assume like Sometimes like we've got some record deal and we've got all this, but we don't. So we're in it. We're an independent band. We're a part mm. of the Free for Free Collective, but we don't have a like a major deal or anything. So we kind of, I think we just rather be creative mm. as much as we can. And mm. if we have to not have this one week, then we won't have it. So we can be creative. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, or I do. We, we just kind of. Yeah. I don't know. We'll Maybe make our videos spend, with our friends, or yeah. I think we spend like so much budget on like, our outfits and stuff. And in reality, we're up to like five a.m. sewing for like this event we have to go to. When they probably think, I don't know, we've spent loads on it. <laughs> but we're just, like, yeah, because so we get comments sometimes, haven't we? Like, oh, flashy yeah. video and stuff in that. We're like, oh wow, that video you just commented cost like four hundred pounds or three hundred pounds. Not even that. Do you know what I mean? And that was because. It's not people assume things about bands, but they don't actually know that what bands have to put in before they mm. even make a penny. So um, I feel that. Yeah. Do you think there's a Do you think that's a stereotype that the bigger your your name as an as an act gets, the more expectations people have that you are being pumped by something or that you should be entitled to this or another? And I don't know. People's expectations are a little bit wide, aren't they? often mm. where's that stereotype come from because it does exist it's kind of like the brian harvey effect do you know what i mean it's like i think people believe in like hype and uh, um, uh, kind of amount that to success and stuff like that but it's not i think everyone puts their best foot forward online but the reality behind the scenes is not you know mm. what it is yes you have your highs of course and you appreciate them when they come but you have your lows too but no one's really some acts do i'm not gonna say that mm. no one does because some acts just show it all you know but you we're, everyone's dealing with their own shit you know and we're all kind of making it work especially in lockdown when we know live yeah. bands can gig and a lot of us make our money that way or make us enough money to be able to keep going so since that's gone i think for a lot of bands it's been really detrimental and I don't know. It's um, it's funny. Yeah, I think it's see. it's changing the whole thing. It's changing the whole game. I think there's a there's a um, level playing field that everybody's working on now, and the, the sooner you c- people artists acts connect to their audience even closer, now that we're all on the ground level, you know they'll. I think there will become an appreciation of of how much an artist has to work, like you say, sewing and putting details into all of your outfits you know that 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 harks back from years and years and years ago but but people just presume that when you're wearing something so blingy on on fashion or on point that you've had the money to get it done rather than it's you doing it yeah you do get a lot of assumptions but it's cool you know i kind of show people that you can just do it like our play fair outfits we just found loads of curtain rails 
Yeah, that's such a great video as well. When you <laughs> mentioned, when you thought about, when you said about the expense of a video, I immediately thought of Playfair, and I also thought about this <laughs> session drama se- s- scenario, and I thought to myself, "Yeah, man, like that, that whole thing must have just been one big creative clusterfuck." <laughs> well, it was. Yeah. You know, it's people again assume, but you know, we're very lucky to have Harry. Um, who um, produced, um, who made the video and done all the effects. But it's awesome, it, yeah. You know, so it's, it's a friendship there. And, you know, he obviously, that's just someone, two creatives working with another creative, you know, and that's it, you know. Yeah. I don't think people that's understand. What, I don't think people get uh, the the whole, when you watch a video, it just comes and goes in 2 minute thirty and you don't realize the devil in a detail like to the, to the wire it's it, it's un, to reverse engineer it and try and explain it you'd probably be boring people but you'd also be complaining so it's not that because you really love doing it but when you really break it down how much it takes to make a music video like that it's crazy yeah and same with albums as well like bands will spend so long making their albums and then once it's out, it's done. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cookie cut out, cookie cut. It's, it's a crazy time right now. And the labour intensiveness <laughs> and you, you have to work, is it, it's almost like quadrupled. Mm, it is. It's a strange world, but you got to kind of, you know, keep, keep moving. <laughs> What's the future, girls? What's the future? So you're going to be writing a lot more. Um, Playfair obviously is out. It's out and making it happen. Um, what else is going on? What else is what else is good? Um, <laughs> 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 um, I mean, it's hard to look to next year because obviously we're praying that we can tour. This new vaccine's like floating around, so hopefully that's actually a real thing. Um, mm. So yeah, watch us. Yeah, keep yeah. on creating. That's the ticket, right? Yeah, and enjoy the time while we can. No one in in our whole entire lifetime, this has never happened. And if you can find some positives out of it, you know, enjoy it while it lasts. Because before you know it, you just won't be seeing your family as much. You'll be on the road in the small van. They'll be in furloughed like, oh, I've got a month off. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holidays everywhere. It's so true. It's true. It's Nothing to complain about and everything to look forward to. That's the sentiment, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for now. For now. For yeah. now. Ladies, thank you so much. I'm going to love you and leave you. Let you get on to, uh, yeah, get yourselves back into creative mode. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. I know the guys out there are appreciating it as well. You superstars. Thank you for having us. My pleasure. You girls stay lucky. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Killer Keller podcast coming in live in effect. Big shout out to Nova Twins and uh, yeah, share, sharing is caring. You know the deal. Stay lucky, people. Don't talk to any strange ones. Peace.